And joining us over the phone to have this conversation is a public affairs analyst, Ms. Matthew Oluku. Good morning, Matthew. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. All right. Uh, we started off having this insecurity conversation for last week. And of course, your submissions were well noted. Uh, but it, it became even more worrisome over the weekend uh, when uh, some kidnapped victims, uh, you know, were rescued by the Nigerian military and um, other videos surfaced online last week. Uh, people have been reacting to this, but let us get your reaction once more. How do you, uh, what's your take on the insurgency going on in Nigeria? I think um, it has to do with Nigeria as a sovereign state not having monopoly or coercive power over all the sovereign integrity of Nigeria. Mm. Because what happened is we are hearing about the kidnappers hibernating in the forest in Kaduna State, and the forest in question is within Nigeria territory, within Nigeria sovereignty. And we understand that the military, well, you can't do before now, use that place as a training base. So the question is, if the location has been identified, what is stampeding the armed forces from going to that forest to destroy them? Not that dislodge, from going there to arrest them and brought them to work. That's on one hand. The other thing is, the issue that has to do with criminalizing ransom pain. I think I believe that ransom pain should be discouraged, but the matter that the government seems to be going about it look as if they are trying to shift their responsibility. Because if you don't make a law and you criminalize ransom pain, saying that if anyone pays ransom is uh, discovered discover that anyone pays ransom, that the whole conviction that the person will be liable to be uh, imprisoned for 15 years or so. What that means is the government is shifting that responsibility because what they needed to do is to arrest anyone who is perpetrating crime. Because in as much as it's good to discover that some pain, how do you tell a family not to pay ransom, especially where the senator perhaps have not been able or is not able to arrest you their loved one? So it's difficult to convince the Nigeria not to pay ransom if they have their loved one in captivity of the kidnappers. And federal government, sorry, yes, federal government to the respective security agencies have not been able to rescue the person. I think we are hearing good news now. I understand that the family of five where the leader killed one, and later the ransom to hundred million. I understand that the police is saying they have been rescued from the forest in Kaduna State. And it's not yet that ransom was paid, but from the police um, perspective, it was security agencies that rescued the. Uh, the the family members. So I think that is a good news. Let us look at as a people of the country. I think we should think after the boss. I think we should look at our service architecture mm. with a view to reveal it. I think we are mature for organizing the current environment. I think we should look towards state policing. I think we should allow the governors to quite some level of executive power. I think we want to start to this when the this is an amateur crew, security um, organization, or whatever they may call it. I think federal government should look towards align the social security arrangement to get a level of um, uh, ask to be able to try the capacity to combat crimes and criminality. And I think other states should be encouraged to go to the houses of assembly or to enact laws to empower the state to set up such security arrangements. Mm -hmm. And let me quickly say that the fear of the federal government that if that happens with police retribution, that that state will be space one. Because what we are seeing is the threat of this body trade is not paying, book around, then it is a direct threat. And there may be need to address it. The other thing I want to understand that the media had a meeting where they propose to come up with security arrangement, which is an upfront for me, and because several leaders are accused of being copied, I mean, they are, they are members. Mm. Put an enhancement, I mean, several are accused of being copied for most of the crime that was 
sweetness, it is in tune and um and bring me as well as that I can have what I bet it. So coming out to say they want to set up a degree attribute across board, maybe in the whole North Central. I think it's not a work on development. But I think what you say we are all stakeholder. What are the private themselves, the state governors, federal government, and all the things that this ought to come and sit on the round table and think that we move forward. I think that's the way to go. All right. Um, just before I, um, Josh, uh, you come in, um, just being also a uh, school of thought, because, of course, it was a very rowdy weekend, if you would agree with me. And part of the, uh, you know, should I say opinions that came up during this time is the fact that some people are pointing fingers at financial institutions. I'm talking uh, deposit money banks of encouraging or, or you know, uh, enabling this uh, abduction industry because according to these people making these opinions, they say these ransoms are paid into bank accounts that were opened by individuals who walk into banking halls or visit banking websites uh, to open these accounts. And of course, if you know what it takes to open a bank account in a country like Nigeria, you would know that there is no way whoever owns or the individuals, a group of persons who run a certain bank account cannot be identified because there is, there is a particular bio data form you're supposed to fill, which contains good enough information to track down anybody who runs such bank accounts. And these people are of the opinion that the banks have these informations and yet ransoms are paid and transferred from these bank accounts. That, that means the transactions are being monitored and seen by account managers and you know bank members of staff and therefore they're being pointed at as being encouraging and enabling to this industry. Do you agree with that? Uh, let me let me quickly say that I have not won the report that has been so I don't know how it goes. But however, if bank officials are collaborating with uh, maybe people who have their loved ones and captivity, mm -hmm. I'm not saying uh, in the first place, that the you know, the pressure of trying to get the other one out may not mean that you pay ransom. But going forward, how we pay the ransom, the data or the information or the bank accounts should have been made available to security agency. So if that is happening and the bank officials or the banks are not synergizing with the agency for the purpose of tracking down who run the accounts, that is lack of protection on the part of the bank officials. If that is happening anyway, I don't know whether it's happening. But uh, the news what we hear is that in most cases, most in that part of the for cash. But if for the reason that dealing with bank transactions and the bank officials are not leveraging on that to give credible information to certain agencies, I think the certain agencies and the federal government should be set light on those banks and make sure they do a distinct investigation. And then you'll find one thing to fill you out of the law. And then that's what I think. All right, kidnapping and, of course, other forms of insurgency, you might say in your analysis that sometimes it comes with the delivery of cash, at, you know, by hand, not necessarily um, bank transactions. But, of course, there are some other criminal activities going on in the country that involves the bank enabling this transaction to go through their system. But does it not also beat logic to say that the police who is saddled with this responsibility of making sure that, you know, criminals are apprehended wherever they are, is finding it difficult, especially considering the fact that when this criminality are being perpetuated, of course, you would agree with me that um, communications, communication lines are being opened, which means that the Federal Ministry of Communication and Digital Economy is also brought in this issue. How is it that criminals within the country use our networks to carry out communication, especially when ransom are being made, and yet the police say they are unable to get these guys. And of course, on the other hand, you blame the victim family for coming in when it comes to crowdfunding or other forms of ransom. I think uh, the problems of uh, this economy, I think it's a pandemic. There is a similar issue recently, and it's also worrying one where. As the time the government was talking about me and all that, the 
said was to ensure that once we use any of our communication medium to do any illegal activity, it is easy for the federal government to identify who is doing what. Don't forget that if you are making a call, the communication industry or the network provider know the environment you are speaking with, which is the demand who you are connected with. So I think we is a very good opportunity and an area the federal government should take seriously. Synergy with the there are many um there's network providers, synergy with uh, federal agency, we go a long way in covering crimes and criminality, particularly the issue of kidnapping. But what I would like to know for you to close this or run something, you must have communication, you must have communicated. And to communicate me with what the two Full call um, or all that, and it has to be through all the network, network providers. And I think that is where the um, issue of regulator comes in. The agency that the trouble for regulating the network providers, I mean, that's um, our uh, what we call like also, like, um, I cannot remember the name of that now, but what I like to see in the network, I think there should be code of conduct. So that anyone that says to report any of such uh, conversation to, to place some um, penalty or federal government should sanction such network provider. Because if we have network providers operating in the country and people are using their platform, using their network to negotiate for ransom, at the end of the day, ransom is paid, nobody is investigating who was on the other end of the conversation in the bush. I think uh, the agency should come in and do a proper investigation on our who is not doing a credible information to 